don't believe that balance exists. I believe it's wholeness. I'm whole to begin with, but I I have work to do. Wholeness to me is being able to be your own bridge to your heart, through your heart. Eileen is a firm believer that wellness and fitness starts from the ground up. She obtained certifications in both hand and foot reflexology and loves helping people relax with her skills. She has been leading group fitness and yoga classes for nearly three decades. During COVID, she started a streaming yoga class that you can join from anywhere around the world. Reflexology is a great modality. Uh, it goes way back to ancient times. There's some belief that it was created by Egyptians. Some believe it was created by uh, Chinese. Um, it's To me, that's irrelevant. It's, it's just that it's this modality of you have acupressure points or points throughout your body that correspond to organs and glands and joints. So by the stimulation of those points, you're then able to bring your body into that state of homeostasis or energetic balance and healing and relaxation, which, mm -hmm. and you can, people often associate reflexology with feet, which is probably the most popular. I'm also certified in hands. Mm, um, I didn't know and that. You can, yeah, you, hands um, as well as face and ear. Mm. Um, I've trained in that. I'm not, I, it's, um, I can use it as sort of like um, an addition to, um, but I primarily do feet. I've done hands a lot, but I've kind of morphed into primarily doing, um, doing feet. Mm -hmm. Um and it's it's great because you're the way reflexology works your if you're looking at let's say your feet it maps the body so if you wanted to work a point that's your brain you're going to go to the top of your toes mm -hmm. and then your lungs would be across around the ball of the foot or in the front of your foot your digestion and your organs are mostly found in midfoot because they're found in mid torso. Mm. And then you've got um, like sciatic and um, gluteal in your heels. And mm. here's a cute little tip. So if you sat on the floor mm -hmm. without shoes and socks on and looked in the mirror and you looked at your heels, they kind of look like your glutes. Oh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love how it's symmetrical and like synchronous to your body. Right. I love that's just like, isn't that just how nature works out as it's like, it, yeah. it makes a lot and more sense than we think. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and your body can heal. Mm -hmm. And this is a great way to aid in that healing. Mm -hmm. For me, the human body is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that what we really know about it is just a minor of what mm -hmm. the potential of each human body can do. Uh, to me, it's fascinating that we can get an illness or heal, or we mm -hmm. can do something like reflexology and help maybe prevent something, or that you can relax just by working certain points in, in your feet. Um, and it's, it's, it's wonderful in, I love to hear after I do uh, some sessions, the feedback from the next day of, uh, and I've had a lot of people recently say, oh, I have issues with sleeping and oh my goodness, the next day I slept 10 hours or mm -hmm. I fell asleep a couple of hours after the session and I slept through the night. And mm -hmm. that is, that for a reflexologist, that's, that's golden. That's oh, that's, just, that's amazing. I wanted to touch on and just reflect your, your, uh, what you said about, I don't know if we know everything, you know, and I, it's hard to believe really, because I think we think we know so much, but I remember, um, watching a documentary not too long ago. And, and I, I even spoke, uh, at a live event about, about germ theory and how that's new, you know, how germ theory didn't exist until in the germ, as we know, it didn't exist into the, into the dictionary until the 19, early 1900s, you know, like we didn't know. And I, but I remember this other one about not understanding the, the digestive system and how there was, I think it, I believe if I'm remembering right, cause I'm just remembering it was like, I think it was during the civil war. So we're late 1800s again, and somebody had been shot so badly 
that they couldn't repair it, but he was still alive. And so they just studied him and it was almost like, it's hard to believe, but it was like, they didn't understand what they were eating. They didn't even have a connection between what they were eating and how it came out the other side. And it, so it's hard to believe, you know, um, and I think we're always growing as a species. So I, I just sometimes I play with that and wonder, like, what's that going to be like in 100 years when we think, oh, we didn't even know what that was like. Right. We didn't even understand. Right. So I just if, you think of, if you think of that in terms of almost like technology, yeah. what technology is going to be in 100 years is sure. nothing what we know now. And I think it's the same with some of our holistic modalities and what we're learning about the human body. Yeah, I agree. I I agree. Um, I loved that you went and talked a little bit about the history of it. Why is it called, or is there a difference between reflexology and zoning? And what does zoning, do you know anything about? Are, are there um, I'm not familiar with zoning per se, okay. but in reflexology, we work on, we call them zones. Yeah. And they correspond with your, uh, on okay. your feet or even with your hands. They'll okay. correspond with uh, from your big toe down to your heel, that would be zone one. Okay. And then there's different there's different zones in terms of your um, neck zone would mm -hmm. be underneath your toes. Okay. Because if you're if you think of your toes to represent your head, so right mm -hmm. under that is your neck, and then underneath your the ball of your foot would be your diaphragm, and then you've got your um, your waistline, which comes about midfoot on the mm -hmm. plantar aspect, and then your pelvic is at about the top of your heel. Mm -hmm. So there are zones in, in that correspond with different parts of the body. Uh, um, and I, there is a difference with reflexology and a foot massage. Mm -hmm. The problem that sometimes arises is that it's not a regulated industry. Mm -hmm. So somebody who has not gone through reflexology school like I have and who didn't mm -hmm. do the hundreds and hundreds and hours of practicum like myself and the other reflexology students have can call themselves a reflexologist because it's not regulated. Mm -hmm. Sort of like a nutritionist. I could hang out a shingle now and, and, and say I have a business and I'm a nutritionist. I've never taken a course. Mm -hmm. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I eat fairly well, but mm -hmm. I, but there's nothing to say. There's no law that says I can't do that. I can't call right. myself a registered dietitian because I'm not. Um, right. So if you decide you want to do reflexology, I highly recommend you seek somebody out who you know is a certified reflexologist. Mm. Otherwise, you might be getting a lovely, lovely foot massage. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But that's different than if you have a certified reflexologist. Um, very often, if you go and it, you go to a nail salon uh, and they say that it's reflexology, it's very often a lovely foot massage. Oh, wow. But if you went into the nail salon and said, hey, I'm, I'm having a little problem with my left shoulder. Can you show me where that point is? If they're not able to tell you. Mm -hmm. They're not certified. Is there They're certain pressures that you use in certain to, to get different results or what's, what would be the difference? Like what is, what kind of things yeah. do you learn? Where is the most important thing or, or is there other things? Well, the, your spine, I was, I was taught that your spine is your most important reflex because everything comes off the spine. You've got 33 mm. nerves that innervate off your spine. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so we, when I was trained, we start with relaxation to get your foot all nice and relaxed. Mm. And then your first, your first venture into working on the points is we do the spine several times. And although you have one spine, um, you work both the spine reflex on both feet, which mm. is the, which is the medial edge coming from about the base of your big toe down to just below, around your ankle bone. And that represents your spine. Uh -huh. And if you look, sort of like the gluteals, if you look, there's a curve in your foot that represents the curve in your spine. Mm, right. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. So we okay. start there. I've, I've seen different uh, schools of thought as to what you start with, where you go, what, which point you should work on first. I, I don't know that it really matters in terms of 
I don't think if you if you do the spine second or third point that you're you're going to be imbalanced. Mm. It's I think a lot of that comes down to belief and training. I you you might work the spine first. You might do it later on. You may come back to it. Um, I think that's a, really a matter of training and. Um, but there are different, you can do, there are different ways you can work. Um, and again, that's also a matter of how you were trained. Some people do um, thumb walking, which is you'll support the foot or the hand, and then you'll kind of inchworm up to the point. Some may do more lines. Mm. There are certain points you're going to press in and kind of hook into mm. um, to really stimulate that point because it might be deeper. Mm. Or there might be somewhere you rotate because you want that energetic rotation. Mm. And there's some you might just, you might hold. And some of it is intuition as well. I might be working on a spot and I can feel a little something and I might say, okay, let me just go back. Or my intuition might say, I need to work on that spot again, or let me do this spot and, and forego, forego another spot. Um, that, that makes sense. And, and again, going back to how it maps the body, so if you're working your uh, gallbladder, you, let's say somebody had gallbladder surgery, you want to work on the gallbladder, you're going to go to the right side and the liver's on the right, the gallbladder and the liver's on the right. Mm. Um, so you would work the right foot for that aspect. And again, it's, it, maps, it maps the body. And it yeah. says it's over, on your, it's over on your right side toward the side, you'd be going, it, we map it in terms of um, on your right side, between either fingers um, four and five or toes four and five, and then you go down to your mid and it's right there. And then you, mm. you hook in. Um, so there are different methods. There's different techniques. Some people like a really firm technique. Some people work with a really soft technique. Um, mm. You need to find a reflexologist who either can adapt to what you want or one who has a technique that you enjoy. Mm. Um, I had somebody say to me once that her sister went for quote unquote reflexology and couldn't walk for several days because the muscles in her feet were so painful. Well, it winds up that it was not a certified reflexologist. Oh, I have heard that. I have heard different people say, oh, it was so painful. And then other people just love it. I didn't, I didn't know that that was that, that they were both effective. I, you know, I thought maybe if that... it's, if it's painful, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be. Okay. Reflexology should not be painful. There might be a point where you go, Ooh, right. I remember one time when I was um, in reflexology school and we practiced on each other and the instructor would practice and he hit my pituitary point. Whew, I almost jumped off that table. Right. But that's different than I can't walk three right. days later because uh, the muscles in my feet are so bruised. Right. And you That's might have a little, you might feel a little or feel a spot or I've had people go, Ooh, like, what's that? Right. Um, but, but to, to be in pain, mm -hmm. no. Right. No, reflexology okay. is not real. Reflexology is not painful. Okay. It's actually, you should come off this table or, or in the chair or however you're doing it. You come off from your session feeling relaxed mm. and the way I describe it is you, you float out of the room. Now, some mm. people have a reaction where you feel a little lightheaded or you might feel a little term they I've heard used as like punch drunk. And that's mm -hmm. because you're getting um, your energy might be balancing. Right, right. Drink water, rest after. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. And sometimes it might not occur till 24 hours after. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it just depends on how your body is trying to regulate itself, how it's trying to get into that state of homeostasis. Mm, that makes sense. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. So what brought you to practicing and going to school? Uh, I have been in the fitness industry for a long, long time. <laughs> and um, I took a course, a, a, a program, I got certified in a program that was at that time called Willpower and Grace. And it was a barefoot cardio class. And I had always in the back of my mind thought, you know, reflexology is kind of interesting. And I, I took this course and it was very foot emphasis because you're, you're barefoot. And I loved it. And I learned more about feet and the importance of keeping your foot muscles strong and the role that feet play in your balance, in your posture, in how you walk. 
Um, I do a lot of work with, as I like to say, people of a certain age or the way we re I refer to them as the chronologically enriched. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we don't say old. That's and, right. And we don't, we don't say senior citizens. We are <laughs> chronologically enriched. And, I love it. Uh, and uh, for them, it's really important. It's, it's important for everybody. Mm -hmm. But for them, it's really important because if your feet are weak, then everything that sits above it is going to mm -hmm. be weak and it's going to switch how you walk. If you change how you walk or you're unable to walk, you lose your um, you lose your ability to live a vibrant life. Mm -hmm. And there's so many connections. I know, I know with the feet, I know essential oils, you know, mm -hmm. if you, regardless, if you don't know where to put it, bottom of your feet is where it's most often recommended. Right. I, I also know that when I was learning a little bit about, we have on our, um, in the library, we have some things about pets and pets have big yes. chakras on their paws and and that's how sometimes your dog will know a storm was coming or something like that they they're really right. connected so it makes sense that that yeah. we would find information on our human feet <laughs> and then the more i learned about the the importance of foot function and foot strength mm. and then i decided well i want to pursue this a little bit more and every year instead of making a new year's resolution i create a theme that I can, I, I look at it as a um, uh, a thread in a tapestry mm. for the year that I can weave in. And I decided that year my phrase was, my focus was going to be change brings change. Wow. I love it. And so I decided then I pursued going to uh, reflexology school. I'm in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So about every other weekend, I'd hop on a train and I'd go down to New York City and I took um, I took the classes in uh, feet, hands, face, ear, and um, and I then I did my practicum and I got certified in, I believe it was 2018 and 2019. Mm, I, that's amazing. That's amazing. Do, do you, so what do you love most about, about it and, and working with your clients? I, what I love is I get as much out of it Okay, maybe not as much, but I get a lot of out of it as well. And I just love the opportunity to have them relax and mm -hmm. to bring awareness, more awareness into their body. When I do my sessions, um, and I do them primarily uh, at, although they still use the word senior centers, senior centers. <laughs> um, and um, and I'm in a room, we've got the essential oils going in the diffuser. I put essential oils in the cream that I use. I, um, at the end of their session to wake their feet up, I'll spray them with some uh, peppermint oil and water. Mm. And it's funny when I do that, when I go for the bottle, they know it and I, inevitably they're like, oh, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that um, sounds delightful. That sounds and so delightful. For, to be in that room, in that situation where they're, relaxing and enjoying mm -hmm. and I can give them that gift of mm -hmm. energetic balance it is it's divine for me mm -hmm. can you feel um do you feel information from the body as you're working with it sometimes um mm -hmm. sometimes feet will talk to me now mm -hmm. that sometimes I'll feel something and it might be that there's a muscle there that's a little tight Mm. It could be that there's an energetic block there. It could mm. be that there's something going on in a particular organ or gland or joint. Um, I had a woman at one of the centers and I'm working on her feet. And I said to her, uh, I mean, after the session, I'll ask them if they want, if I receive any information. Mm -hmm. And I said, is something going on with your urinary tract? Mm. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. She said, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm all good. I said, okay. I felt something, but again, it could be muscle, could be energy. Mm -hmm. I, I can't tell. Right. And then I saw her in one of my, I also do um, yoga and chair yoga and movement classes. I saw her in one of my classes at the center a couple of weeks later. And she said, yeah, I haven't been here because guess why? I, a, a week after I saw you, I had a raging urinary tract infection. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Those and are I, and. And I had somebody when I was working on my um, practicum and she's a, 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 I want to say a girl, but 
she was an adult around my kid's age. So that's why. <laughs> um, and um, she, for whatever medical reason between her and her doctors had her adrenals removed mm. and I'm working on the points. And as I'm working on it, she was like, Oh, wow. And I said, Oh, I'm sorry. My pressure might be a little, I can back off. She said, no, it hurts so good. Like I feel it. It hurts so good. And I was okay. And I kept working. And she, after the session, she said, what was that point? Mm. And I chuckled and I said, that was your adrenal point you felt. And she mm. said, but I don't have my adrenals. I said, but your body doesn't know that. Mm. And it wasn't long after her surgery. I said, your body still has the energy from your adrenals being there. And it's trying to balance that out. That's why you felt it. Wow. That's amazing. That is yeah. amazing. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in what ways, other ways have you seen this, you know, transform people or benefit or change, change um, people? Well, one of the things it's reflexology is luscious when you yeah. have somebody who's qualified, certified doing that on you. And you just get to surrender. As I say to people, when they get on my table, you have one job and that's to relax. Mm. Now, some people like to chat. Mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. people would chat like while well, I'm doing one foot and they'll quiet by the other. Or some people totally zone out. Um, there's di again, different schools of thought on that. I know some mm -hmm. people who only want quiet. My personal feeling is it's your session. However you want to do it mm -hmm. is up to you. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it, they, I've seen people really relax and you can, you can do this on yourself as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're anxious you could do a point to help bring yourself into relaxation. Um, your solar plexus point on either your hand or your foot. Now your solar plexus is your energetic chakra system um, around your navel area. Mm -hmm. around, and, um, and that is an energy of sometimes if you're anxious, your chakra, your solar plexus might be a little off balance or if there's that fight or flight or, and you can take that solar plexus point. Let's say you're in the grocery store and you're getting a little anxious because you're looking at the price of food or something. Yeah. And, um, and then as you're getting ready to check out or in your checkout line, there's a couple of people ahead of you and you're feeling anxious. You can take your hand, go to your middle finger. So if your thumb is your first, so it's your third finger, slide down to underneath where the bones are. It's right mm -hmm. under your bones. So, and on your foot, it would be the ball of your foot. You can do a finger. I like to do my thumb press in there. You'll mm -hmm. feel like a little, there's a little indent right there. Mm -hmm. You might have to shift around a little bit, but you'll find it. Mm -hmm. And you press in there and you might press and hold, or you might do little clockwise circles and take some deep breaths. And you can do that on each hand. And that's your solar plexus point. Mm -hmm. And that will help you to get a little bit more a little bit more chill. Mm -hmm. So you could do that anywhere and nobody even knows you have to be doing it to yourself. So you can mm -hmm. really perform reflexology on yourself. Some people do it um, on their own before they go to bed. They'll work on some points. And mm -hmm. even just that foot massage, that mm -hmm. self foot massage, or if you get your partner to just do that, he doesn't even have to be, or she doesn't have to be a certified reflexologist, but even just that contact, that, that, um, mm -hmm. That exchange Having of energy yeah. on your foot. Yeah. And, right. It's the extreme of energy. And, um, and you could do it on feet, but you could also have your partner do it on your hands because mm. hands are actually more intimate than your feet. Mm. And you might, right. your feet might help you relax more, but you'll get that connection more if you just surrender and you let whoever um, just put that cream and go onto your hands and stroke hands. And you don't even have to have, it's, it's reflexology ish. Mm -hmm. um, and you can always call up a, a chart on whatever right. server Google you chart. use and look up the chart. If you, there's a specific point you want to work on and you mm -hmm. can get the idea. And for those who are perfectionists, mm -hmm. uh, you might get a little anxious. Am I on the right point? Is, if you're in the general area, it's all good because it's energy based. Mm -hmm. Right. That's really good. Now, I remember a doctor, a famous doctor, he would, people would call him and he would work them through, uh, it was years ago, and he would work them through their headaches using their hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What, do you know what that is? Can, 
Can you share with um, us what, what that I, was? What I've been trained is, I don't yeah. know if it's the point that he was, but what I was trained for hand, um, if you take your hand and then on your opposite hand, you, you've got your pointer finger. So go to the webbing between your thumb and yeah. number two. Slide to where you I get that stop. dead end that yes. where the bone is. And then you press the finger in there. And then you're going to go onto the plantar aspect on the bottom and press in. So sort of like as if there's a laser beam. Yeah, that's what I, mm-hmm. that's what he did. And Yep. And that's, and that's a great, because in hand reflexology, that's also your adrenal point. So it helps to calm down your adrenals, Mm -hmm. which will help you relax because if adrenaline is pumping through your body, Mm. that might lead to your headaches. So this is getting your, uh, helping to get your adrenal point in balance. Mm -hmm. And then, and you close your eyes if you care to, or just breathe through it and get that a press and you'll find too that if you're in that headache state or heading to that headache state mm-hmm. you want to get there like as soon as you can to to get it because mm-hmm. once you're way into that migraine or that headache this might not be as effective okay but if you get into that point of um oh i think i'm getting that headache mm-hmm. go to that point and you can do it you've got two adrenals they sit above your kidneys so do it on either on each hand mm-hmm. oh that makes so much sense i like that i like that yeah so and there's just so much, there's so many points then you can use for, um, if you have issues with your shoulders, the point is underneath your pinky, whether it be your finger or your toe, um, just underneath the base of your toe, right at the head of the bone. Mm. And that's, and that's your shoulder point. So if you did a lot of weekend warrior stuff or you're doing yard work and you can work into that hand mm. and if your right shoulder is bothering you, you would do your right hand, left shoulder, left hand, or foot, mm-hmm. or foot. Wow. I'm just noticing how much I will intuitively kind of do that. So I'm like, I'll grab onto, so I'm like going, I got to pay attention when that shows up. Right. <laughs> and and let's say you go to a restaurant and you've had mm-hmm. this big, heavy meal. So mm-hmm. you might then want to go to the middle of the palm of your hand and you're not going to kick off your shoes at a restaurant you can do right. that when you get home. <laughs> um and then you can work into the middle of the palm of your hand because mm. that's where your uh, your digestion is. That's the organs for digestion. It's your intestines. And you would want to work going up and down in stripes, but you'd also want to work side to side because your intestines go side to side. Ah. And another thing that you can do is um, if you're home and again, you've you're feeling sluggish and it's also really great for foot muscles is to take a tennis ball or lacrosse ball, put it under your midfoot and roll because Mm -hmm. that's also getting stimulation into those points as well. Mm -hmm. A little different. Yeah. 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 So how would you describe from your schooling and things like that, that the idea of pressure points and why and how and why they're connected, explain that a little bit to somebody that doesn't know. Um, It's, it's a, an acupressure point. Um, there's also some feeling, in, especially in Chinese medicine, that it's connected to meridians. I wasn't trained in meridians. I was trained for to connect to organs, glands, and joints. Okay. Um, and because you've got those uh, corresponding points in your hands and feet, and it's it's an energetic connection. Mm-hmm. That's how this the stimulation, it's the stimulation of those points that brings a, an energy of balance to correspond to wherever it is on that part of your body. Yeah, that's one of the things we're not completely familiar with is that energy system of the body. It's, right. it's still not yet. If, if you go to the wholenessnetwork.com, scroll to the bottom, that's one of our free, that's our little free thing at, um, that we offer everybody is a free class on the energy system, the body's energy system, because it's just something that's foreign, especially in Western society. Oh, Western, absolutely. Reflexology mm-hmm. is much more accepted over in Europe than mm. it is over here. Um, oh, and in over, over in Europe, it's considered more of um, an aspect of not necessarily medicine, but here it it's thought of as I'm going to get reflexology because I want a lovely foot massage. And over in Europe, it's more of I'm going to get reflexology because I want to get healthier or mm. I want to work on a specific point so I can heal better in that area. Right. It's maybe even 
prescribed versus just something sure. that's fun. <laughs> yeah, right. that makes sense. Right, right. That but yeah, sense. Europe Europe has a very different um, philosophy toward reflexology than we do here. It it I have to say in this country it is growing, mm -hmm. but slowly. Slowly, soon we'll get there, and that's why we do these kinds of uh, podcasts. This is what I really wanted to do because I think. There's a huge umbrella of, you know, whether people call it energy healing or energy work or energetic medicine or uh, mm -hmm. whatever people want to call it. Uh, I want people to understand what's included in this gigantic umbrella of of healing modalities and and how they can support us. Not like I say here, you know, yeah, it's nice and it kind of, it, you know, that the energy gives you a, a, some energy, but there is some healing um, properties to these things. And if we can, and I, I think that we intuitively know what works for us. I think, you know, like mm -hmm. if this is speaking to you and it just says that, you know, I just believe that you just get that little tap on your, you know, in, on your insides that say, this is what I need to do. And I need to seek out this kind of help and this kind of yeah. support. And one thing that's great about these things is they are great alongside things like other illnesses, you know, whether they're um, cancer sometimes just yes. to, just to have that, you know, as it's, it, it supports it so much or, mm -hmm. or autoimmune diseases or things like that. Um, these kinds of modalities just complement any other. Absolutely. Kind of yeah. health thing that you're receiving. One of my regular clients is, um, she's going, she has pancreatic cancer mm. and I can't cure her pancreatic cancer. Right. Uh, but what reflexology does for her is the relaxation part of it mm -hmm. she's understandably very um, anxious about her disease and mm -hmm. its progression and what road it's going to take her down on so uh for her getting on that table and surrendering and letting me work on her feet um that's her time to really just let go and relax and know mm -hmm. that even just for that half an hour, 45 minutes, hour, or whatever it might be that she's okay. Yes, that's so good. That's so good. And, and we're so careful here too in the West to, to we think that as self-care, but I think it's like necessary care, yeah. you know, uh, because her, that is, that is so helpful to have uh, whether, and you know, that it may not be cancer. Maybe it's, I'm in a busy state section of my life I'm building a home or I'm starting a mm -hmm. business or whatever and if you just give yourself that time to say for this few minutes I'm just going to be here right. and receive and relax that's healing that's healing all by yes. itself and, and the word heal is different like you say than cure right and that's why we're the wholeness network then other the healing is actually becoming whole which is a totally right. different thing and absolutely yeah. Because your body has to work together wholly. Yes. Yes. And I if that. it's, it, I, it, I'm so often reminded of that little kid's song, you know, your ankle bones connected to your leg bone. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And it's true. Be, you mm -hmm. are, we're all, your body is connected, which is why personally it drives me crazy when in the, my view of medicine these days is everyone has a specialty and we only deal with that specialty or that organ. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me how it's my entire body is functioning because so if true. I have, if I have a hip issue, it's mm -hmm. going to change how I stand. It's going to change how I walk. It's going to change my pelvis. My You're pelvis right. is going to change my balance. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it, it, we are so connected. You are, you are right. I think that's one of the, when I did that talk, it, it, that was one of the things that the germ theory really disrupted because, because we have this, uh, like a model, like a parts model of medicine now that, and we used to kind of have, it was the whole it was looked at holistically and that kind of disrupted that a little bit because yeah, you take out, it's like, you know, you go, if, I, I don't know if you've ever seen, um, anything about people that have had um organ implants and they have all of a sudden they have this new uh food craving or new right. thing you know that was and come to find out it was from their donor you know that they're, they're, there's we're connected we are whole beings we are and, whole beings yeah and not and not that i'm against 
a organ transplant, but it's it, it's just one of those places that's like, you know, wow, we need to kind of pay attention to that. Cause I, I and right. I love your example. Cause yeah, you're, if your hips out, the way you see the world is going to shift the way you like physically, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> physically, right. the way you see everything's going to be different. The what side of that your ear is going to hear more on one side, you know, it's going to shift the way that you show up in the world. A hundred percent. And I, and I believe that we live life from the ground up, mm -hmm. which is why I emphasize so much that you need to work uh, on your feet in mm -hmm. my yoga classes we do footwork and toe exercises and or bowl ro ball rolling every single time because mm. you need to keep your foot muscles strong so that what stays above it is strong. You think about building a house. You don't build a house <laughs> from the roof down. You build it from the right. And so that's why it's really important to have your feet nice and strong mm -hmm. so that you can you get that solid base. Mm, yeah, for sure. So you're in Connecticut and I'm in Connecticut. Yeah. And what else? Tell me more about the other things that you offer and tell us a little bit more about you and Yeah, um I'm a yoga instructor, chair yoga instructor. I do movement classes again at some of the senior centers. I offer a virtual chair yoga class at 10 a.m. on Wednesday mornings. Uh, Eastern Ooh, time. And um, if anybody is interested, they can um, get a hold of me at my email, which is Eileen, E I L E E N, at Eileen Burns, B Y R N E S dot com. Okay. And I'm more than happy to have you hop on and try it, see if it's for you. And we do, as I said, we do chair yoga, but we also incorporate footwork. We incorporate a few moments of minutes of standing postures for balance mm -hmm. and strengthening your legs. But you have that option. I have some people in, in the program who don't want to stand. Awesome. Mm -hmm. They don't have to. Um, and uh, and the great thing is I've got people from, I've got one person in uh, Europe who does it. I've got people on the West Coast. I've got people on the East Coast. So it's great. Everyone can can come together. And that's a, it's a wonderful program. And we incorporate very often we incorporate reflexology points in that as well, mm -hmm. because it's, uh, to me, reflexology and yoga, I don't know, you want to say go hand in hand or foot in foot, but, um, but it, they, they just marry each other very well because mm -hmm. yoga is that you want to come into that place of physical and emotional and spiritual and mental balance. And one mm -hmm. of the ways you can do that is through reflexology points. Mm. And when did you start doing, when did you become certified as a yoga instructor or yoga? Um, yeah. Gosh, I've been doing yoga since I was have to think I, I, I do calculate everything in terms of how old my kids are. Um, <laughs> That's right. I started doing uh, fitness classes uh, before my son was born, about a year before he's born. He's now 32. So 33, 34 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing yoga probably about 25 years Wow. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. That is amazing. We'll for sure put all of your links and stuff in the show notes okay. so that everybody can can Great. reach that because that that online yoga class is amazing. And chair chair yoga, I think that's probably so helpful for so many people. Yes. Because yeah. you can find a floor yoga class in right. a lot of places. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult. It's not very difficult, but it might be difficult to find a chair yoga class, especially someplace other than a senior center. There are people mm -hmm. in the country who don't have access to senior centers where they might have a chair yoga class. Mm, right. And they can sure. still get that movement and breath work and mobility and footwork. And that's the glory. That's the wonderful yeah. aspect of technology is, mm -hmm. is that um, they can hop on the class and, yeah. um, and it's, it's a very, very reasonable price because most of my people came from senior centers. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of people are on fixed incomes and, mm -hmm. and um, I'm, I want them to be able to get the benefit of it as well. Yeah. And I think with yoga, especially like it, sometimes it could be intimidating to start. So I feel like that's kind of like a first step. I don't have to, sure. you know, that sometimes there's this idea that everybody in the class is going to be putting their legs over their heads, you know, and everything. And I'm going to start out. So I would, I would feel more comfortable starting with a chair, you know, with, mm -hmm. and feeling like, okay, I can start there. And, and, and there is like so I much you it. can do in a chair. You can do today in my floor yoga class, we did warrior two standing. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Wednesday, we'll be doing Warrior Two in the chair. Right. That's amazing. The only difference is with some of the poses, you're not going down to the floor and you've got the support of the chair. And right. when we come and do our balance work, you have that support of the chair. But I have somebody in my uh, class who is um, in a wheelchair and the standing aspect, she adapts to what she can. Mm. And, and that's awesome. And the rest of it she does in the chair. I love it. I love it. Yeah, uh-huh. chair yoga is is great, and it's um, often overlooked. Mm-hmm. I love that. Well, we will for sure put all of the links to see you and see if people mm-hmm. out there want to come. See- um, one thing mm-hmm. I will say about reflexology that just popped into my head. Um, yeah. If the one uh, the one thing about reflexology, if you have had recent blood clots, mm-hmm. please get approval from your doctor. Good to know. To have reflexology done because it works a lot on circulation. And mm-hmm. so it's it's great for circulation, not so much if you've had a recent blood clot. Um, mm-hmm. So before, I know for me, before I would work on anybody, um, then I would want to get a clearance from, from their doctor. And one other thing about reflexology is I love a body massage. Love it. Love it. But some people don't they don't mm-hmm. want to be touched they won't want to take off their um their clothes mm-hmm. so the only thing i need naked is either mm-hmm. your hands or your feet mm-hmm. and even if you don't want to take off your shoes i can still work on your hands yeah and you'll still get those incredible benefits from reflexology so for people who don't want to uh take mm-hmm. their clothes off and and be worked on in that aspect um reflexology might be an incredible alternative it's different it's a cousin of Mm -hmm. but you're still getting that healing modality you're still getting that relaxation you're still getting that that touch Mm -hmm. you know I'm probably one of those I I I mean a massage is okay I like a massage who's not gonna like you know there's something I'll like it but I will my feet you could spend I mean I love a foot massage (laughs) again and I and uh, the reflexology is even better because I do respond I like the energy aspect of it as well I like that I it feels good but I'm also you know balancing and connecting all those Mm -hmm. those things so I I I love it I love it so much yeah well you can you can train somebody and and uh they can start working on your on your feet I love it I love it so we always ask our guests to tell us about what their ideas are of wholeness what do you think about or what does wholeness mean to you and Wholeness means to me being in a state of joy. Mm-hmm. I love that. Because if you're if you're if you've got that joy within you, it radiates without. And if you've got that joy within you, it helps to keep you healthy. Mm-hmm. And um, and it doesn't have to be a huge all day joy it may be little pockets of joy it could be for me sometimes in the morning it's sipping my tea and looking at my bird feeders or it could be that little piece of chocolate i had yesterday or a phone call from your kids whatever that little nugget of joy might be but it brings your your mind your body your soul your mental aspect all together in this place of feeling calm and protected feel empowered every day with wholeness videos meditations downloads classes and more by joining the wholeness library at thewholenessnetwork.com